today in this closing message in this series on lifestyle evangelism, we want to talk about nurturing and discipling. That means when you lead somebody to Christ, they express their desire to believe in Jesus uh, and you've led them into a, a time of decision to follow Jesus Christ. Don't end there. Don't stop there. Don't just abandon them there. You got to take them a few steps forward so that they're able to make the rest of their journey, you know, uh, uh, in a good way. Now, let's begin the very basic. You know, when a person is born again, when a person comes into God's family, they are born as babies in Christ. And they need to be fed and nurtured in the faith. First Peter chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. As newborn babies, desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. So when you're born, you come to know the Lord, you've tasted the Lord, He's good, wonderful. But you're like a newborn baby. And you need the milk of the what? To grow. And even for those of us who may be, uh, you know, a little bit more uh, mature in our faith, even we need to keep growing. He says, verse 17, You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked. So he's talking to believers. He says, I don't want you to fall. Don't get caught up in the way of the wicked. Verse 18. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what's the antidote to falling away? What's the key to being steadfast? It is to keep growing. So I want to just give you four things you and I must do to nurture and disciple new people. Number one is... To teach them God's words. Saying, hey, here's the Bible. Here's how you read it. And you teach them the word of God. Show them from scripture. It builds us up. It enables us to walk in our spiritual inheritance. So give people the word. Second, second thing that you and I can do, very simple. Is to train them in spiritual disciplines. Things like prayer. Show them how to pray. Have them with you when you pray. So they will listen. Oh, this is how you pray. Teach them how to read the word. Spiritual disciplines, things that they can do are, are, are about growing in Christ-likeness, living a holy life. So there's got to be constant practice. There's got to be training to help them grow, to help them mature. And so you teach them certain disciplines in their spiritual life. Number three is to connect them with Christian fellowship. Introduce them to other Christian friends. And now this can happen at home. Right? So you just invite two or three other friends and say, hey, here's so and so. And they kind of you know, spend time in prayer. They come home. You, you pray together. You worship together. You sing together. Uh, so anything. A life group. Or it can happen in a coffee shop. Wherever. But just get, connect them to other believers. And then if they are able to, bring them to church. Now this is so important. Hebrews 10 verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. As is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as you see the day approaching. So we know the Lord is returning. And so we need to keep ourselves uh, strong. And, and one way to do this is by being with other believers, uh, and fellowshipping, sharing our faith, and growing together. And the last thing, number four, is equip them to serve. That means encourage them to serve. Anyway, now one very important thing, uh, is to help them share Jesus with others. So you take them with you. Let them see you sharing Jesus with other people. They will learn. So in closing, just some simple guidelines here. You know, nurture one-on-one. -on -one. That initial period is very important where you spend time with that person one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, they can be a part of a group, but that one-on-one -on -one attention is important at least during that initial period. Maybe it's three months or some, it may be six months. They, they need that encouragement. So do that one-on-one. -on -one. Take the time, invest into their lives. And then you journey with them till they can walk on their own. You're not going to do this for the rest of their lives. Your goal is to make them able to stand on their own. And uh, uh, you know, allow them to walk on their own and pursue God's purposes. And number four, finally, is support them through challenges that they may face. Or when, when people come to faith in Christ, they may for, face persecution. So in closing, I just want to say this, you know, all of us can do this, but just make this a lifestyle.